I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad today, praise God, to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, why am I so glad? Because I know your life is about to change. Your life is about to be transformed. You are about to enter into a realm that you will like. Praise God. How? How? Because the Spirit of God is here and He will help you. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Are you really ready? And release your faith. Don't just say recitation with me. No, release your faith in these words. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, the one who believes that those things which he says shall come to pass, that one shall have whatsoever he says. So what is going to bring your daily bread? It, what is going to bring your daily bread is when you make a demand for it today. So if I'm going to make a demand for my daily bread today, then I'm going to receive my daily bread. Okay, so stop thinking it. Say it. Make the demand. You see how it works? Yes. Make the demand. Are you ready? Join me now as we do the same thing. So we release our faith in unity right now. I'm telling you, it's going to stir up a miracle from heaven. Are you ready? Let's go now. Say, it with, say this with me. Say, Father, I demand for my daily bread right now. I know I have it with you and I know you are willing to receive it, to release it. Therefore, right now, I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let the miracles begin to flow in every area you need it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now I'll share with you yesterday what Jesus said. It is given to you. Now that's actually the blessing of the Lord. When God appears to you and says He wants to bless you, I bet you He's not going to give you anything physical. God bless me with a new car bless me with a new car and what are you waiting for you are waiting for a new car to show up before that car shows up hear me this is what happens and this is how you will know that that car is coming from God before that new job before that house that you're believing God comes before Anything physical that you're believing God for comes. The first thing, and, and that's how you know that God is involved. If this doesn't happen, I assure you, that thing that you receive, you may as well lose it. Because you see, let me tell you this. It's easy to go out there, labor hard, make money, and buy yourself a good car. It's there, you can do it. You can do it. Labor hard. Focus, save, plan for it. You get a good car. See that now? But you see, if we're talking about, I want a car that God will give to me. Now why? Why? Because you, you, you find some Christians today who don't like this kind of conversation. They feel it makes people to be lazy. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Now, there are people who abuse. Now, when I say abuse, understand what I mean by that. Abuse such teachings. They abuse it because they don't understand it. So, so they hear, for example, they hear, call it and you will have it. Is it. What kind of lazy thing is that? Now, it's lazy to you because you just heard in parables. So it makes no meaning to you. But the one who has ears to hear, he has call it and it shall be. And his mind begins to process. I have to know exactly what to call, how to call it, when to call it. And I'm telling you that alone is enough labor for you. What do you mean is enough labor? I'm telling you the truth. Because, because, <laughs> you know, James told us something. He says, the one who looks at the perfect law of liberty 
and he is not a forgetful hearer, but he is a doer of the work. That man shall be blessed. Which man? The man who looks into the perfect law of liberty. Now you've now got to know what is the perfect law of liberty. <laughs> And he is not a forgetful hearer. It's telling you a character. He is not a careless person. He is someone whose eyes are sharp, whose memory is sharp. Now, you will forget what you don't understand. So he is telling you somebody who reads, who studies, who looks until he understands. And then he says, he is not a forgetful hearer, but then he is a doer of the work. Letting you know that this man is not a lazy man. He said, this man will be blessed. Understand? He didn't say, this man shall make money. He said, this man shall be blessed. So you see, it takes work to be a blessing. Question is, what work? When people hear work, they all can think about what they use their hands to do. Okay, I've got to have a business. I've got to be working somewhere, so I need to apply for the job. Yes, but you see, when you want to walk in the blessing of God, those things are not the primary things you think about. Those things are the secondary things. The primary things is this. What does God give? That's what I was sharing with you yesterday. So Jesus said, you have been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So if I want to get a new car now, how do I get the new car? I've got to get it by operating the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So what are you talking about? I'm telling you the truth. And there is a difference between the car that God gives and the car that you get for yourself. There's a difference. I'll tell you the difference. This is, this, this is so important. I'll tell you the difference. Everything that God gives to you is eternal. <laughs> if God gives you a car, car becomes eternal. So what do you mean car becomes eternal? Car will never die. Understand what I'm saying. If you ask God for a car, Father, I need a car. Lord, and, and, and see, that's why it's important that as believers, you operate this thing. Because you, you, you've seen those, you know, you, you've been around. So you've seen people who have been confessing Christ for so long. And maybe some of you, maybe some of you are older. And you've watched people or even yourself. You used to do well financially before. And now maybe you're retired and things are like down for you. So you, you find yourself having to think more, okay, how do I make some more money? Oh, if it was in the days when I used to work, I would have had money. Or if it was the days when this thing, I had this company, oh, I had my company then. Why did your life reduce? Why are things not working the way they were working for you before? I'll tell you, because it was not eternal. It was not eternal. It was only physical. Your job was only physical. It was not eternal. Now, what do I mean eternal? I'll tell you, I'll explain it to you. Listen. You pray to God for a job, Father, or for a car. Let's leave something countable, physical. So, Lord, I want to get a car from you. Now, how will God give you the car? By the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. That's how he operates. So God is not going to throw down a car for you. No. The first thing God is going to give you, because you see, for God to answer you, he is an eternal God. And whatever he does is eternal. So when God takes your request for, you ask God for a car. When God takes that request and he delivers the answer to you, hey, guess what God, God has just done for you? He has given you, he has answered the issue of car in your life. You know what that means? It means 
When God says, yes, I have given you a car, if that's what you heard. This is actually what God said. God said, I have given you car. Now, what are you trying to say? Listen. From God's standpoint, when he answers you, everything that has to do with car for the rest of your life, and hey, not just your life, for generations to come after you, the car question has been answered for eternity. I'm telling you the truth. That's how God answers. If you ask God for a job, that's the same way he answers. If you ask God for a house, that's the same way he answers. He answers you for eternity. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me for the rest of my life, I would never need a car. Now, when I say a car, I'm not just talking about one car. If I need five cars, I mean need, I'm not just talking about sitting down and saying, ah, man, I want to have five cars so that uh, in the morning I take this one to work. In the afternoon, I'll tell the driver to bring the second one. Uh, the, the, the one I go to church with is this one. No, 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 no. Now, there are, there are different levels and there are different realms you walk in. You understand what I'm saying? But understand the principle of this thing. What that means is this, for the rest of your life, and I'm telling you the truth, not just your life. The, <laughs> listen, you are going to have cars as long as God exists. <laughs> you understand that? Now that's why I say God is eternal. So when he answers, he answers eternally. Asatubo, what are you talking about? It's part of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven I'm sharing with you. That's how heaven operates. And it shouldn't be strange to you if you're a child of God. Why? Because unto you it has been given to know. So I'm helping you get it. So he answers you. You want a car? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll give you a car. Thank you, Lord. Now, when that happens, what does God give you first? You see what I'm sharing with you? It, that's the first thing that begins to come to you. And you suddenly begin to understand, okay. See, God is not going to give me a car by me saving up and saving up and saving up and saving up. God is not going to give me a car by me going to the bank and taking a loan and say, oh, I want to get this car. And I'm going to pay over three years. No! No! You got that car for yourself. It's not from God. When it's time for God to give you because you have asked him, that's why the Bible says you have need of one thing and that is patience. After you have done the will of God that you may inherit the promise, you have need of patience. Now what's the will of God here? The will of God is to ask. He says, ask and you shall receive. That's what Jesus said. Ask. Okay, so now I ask. So I have done the will of God. Where that car is concerned, whatever it is you're asking the Lord for. So I ask. Question now is, when did you ask? Um, I shall not. No, 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 no. See, you have to operate it with clear understanding. Okay, so Lord, based on this understanding I have received, I'm going to ask you for a car. Now. Father, I make a clear demand and I want you to give me a car. Or with this understanding I just shared with you, Father, I want, you can actually say, Father, I want you to sort out the car issue in my life. And when you say your life, you're not just talking to yourself or of yourself, you're talking to your children's 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 children. Now this is how, this is how we, we bless our lineage without knowing it. So we, we, we have children who grew up, grew up into the world and they have no worries of, of these, these things. They have no worries. Of, they, they will not even understand how it is working. So, thank you, Lord Jesus. And then God begins to bring understanding to you. He begins to bring. Now, it's personalized. I'm teaching you. Why am I teaching you this thing? So you will know. And, 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 and when, see, 
The fact that I have taught you doesn't mean it will just work like that. I am teaching you so that when the Holy Spirit comes and begins to deal with you, you will remember, oh, this is what Pastor George was talking about. Yes, because it is him. My time is up for today. <laughs> it is God. It is him that brings the knowledge, not me. It's him. But I'm preparing you to receive him. And I pray that the Spirit of God will bring you understanding and he will visit you indeed in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.